today uh, we start with the kids and we start with one of the parables. But, but today we don't get one uh, kingdom of heaven parable. We get six in heaven. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is this, and it's 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 this. And it's as if though uh, Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is so complex, um, it is so huge, it is so hard to articulate what it is. It's as if though Jesus comes at it from this point of view and 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 this point of view. We um, tend to be people who, who like to make God smaller and smaller and more digestible. Um, whether it's to put God in a box so we think we can understand God, or if it's to put God in a box so we can put God on a shelf, you know, and, 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 and do that, or if it's check marks, you know, this is what it means to be a Christian. It, that tends to be our tendency of what we do with God and, and with theology and, and denominations. And, and Jesus blows uh, that, that out of the water. Today, Jesus reminds us that God's economy is immense, that God's economy is mind-blowing, and it's also subversive. So what we are going to do today is um, you get to work today. Uh, so I'm going to want you to grab your bulletins, because what we are going to do is look at these six parables and we're going to look at what's in there. What specifically is Jesus saying to us? And what are the implications of what it means when we talk kingdom of heaven talk? So number one, the first parable is the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. So if you look at the text, what do we know about a mustard seed? It is it's small, it is tiny. In fact, what the text says, it is the smallest of all seeds. And, and so what, what happens to that mustard seed? It becomes a tree. And, and, and the, the comparison is the smallest of seed becomes the, the greatest of, of trees, of bushes. Now, does anybody ever had uh, farmers? You ever had trouble with mustard? Um, it, it goes to seed. So not only does it become, this little thing becomes this great big thing, but it recedes itself and recedes itself and recedes itself. So you get not only this huge picture, but it's expansive. It keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. Remember, we're talking kingdom of heaven here. What else do we hear about uh, the, the mustard seed that becomes a bush, that becomes a tree? That's huge. Their the birds make their nests in it, right? It becomes a home, yes? And, and what would you say about your home? Is it a safe place? Is it a place of comfort? Remember, we're talking kingdom of heaven here. In fact, I'm going to go so far as to say our homes are our sanctuaries. I know that's a political word right now, but the kingdom of heaven talk is all about the subversiveness of what God is up to. Anything else that you see uh, that we want to talk about kingdom of heaven in that first parable? Okay, number two. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. What do we know about yeast? Once again, very tiny. It disappears in the flower, yes. But what happens? It has a huge effect. I'm, I'm seeing this motion up front. It grows and it grows and it grows. Now, when you put, when, when, first of all, who's at work in the parable? That's kind of interesting. First century Palestine, who's at work? A woman in the midst of the kingdom of heaven. Interesting, interesting. Um, she puts a little bit of yeast in. It's my understanding that this three measures of flour is a bunch of flour. A bunch, a bunch of flour. And, and, and that little bit of yeast, how much of the flour does it leaven? All of it. The 
subversive kingdom of heaven is, is universal. It is at work everywhere. The, 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 the yeast doesn't say to the flour, do I have your permission to come in here and do my business? The yeast does its business. The kingdom of heaven shows up and the kingdom of heaven does its business. Um, where it goes, which according to the parable is, is everywhere. Anything else? Pardon me? Ah, there is nourishment, body and soul. Very good, very good, good. And of course, you know, we can even think of uh, the sacrament, that this is part of the sacrament that, that we will share very shortly, this business of bread. But without the yeast. Well, thank you. Yes, we will have bread without the yeast today. Good point, good point. Unless you get into my other loaf, yeah. Um, number three. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden. So first of all, um, where does he find the treasure? In a field. Is that where you usually go looking for treasure? I mean, don't we go uh, to uh, jewelry stores or you know banks or something? Uh, it's hidden in the field. So is it in a place that you wouldn't think to look for it? And it's hidden. What else about this one? What does this one teach us about the kingdom of heaven? Not always easy to see or find. It's not always easy to see or find. Um, but what is he willing to do? It's worth everything. It's not like it's the most important thing. It's the only thing. Do we treat our faith in the same way, that it's not just one thing in our life, but it is the only thing? And folks, what else do we learn about kingdom of heaven in this little paragraph? Three little letter word, joy, joy. joy. You know, uh, there, there's that, that little piece that says, uh, my burden is light. And, and sometimes we think this business of Christianity is, is just, you know, remember those old pictures when they're all looking so serious, you know? Um, uh, the kingdom of heaven is joy. It is joy. Again, number four, uh, it is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. What do we notice about this one? There's a similarity in the last one. It's valuable. It's great value. It's great value. And what is he willing to do? Sell everything. Again, this isn't the, the, the greatest thing. It is the only thing. Anything else? This one, he went looking for it, but the last one, he discovered it. Last yes, this one, he, he, this, he is on a mission this time. At, but the, the last time, he stumbled across it. Which is, isn't that good news, too? But, but yeah, we may go look and, and find something, but uh, in a field, we may stumble across it as well. Uh, number five, the kingdom of heaven is like a net. And what does the net catch? Pardon me? Every kind of fish. Now, it was really fun in the first service because um, we had to spend quite a bit of time talking about the judgment piece of this parable. Um, but, but, in the end, there's sorting going on. Yes, in the end, which means we don't need to be the sorters. Um, that's not our job. And, and I'm not even sure, you know, other uh, uh, parables talk about uh, the wheat being separated from the chaff, and the wheat and the chaff are the same thing. Um, is, is the weeding out of the good and the evil within each one of us. And the point is, I don't know, and I don't need to know because that's not my job. Uh, this net, the kingdom of heaven, is a net that catches fish of every kind. And if there's sorting and, and judgment, it is, it, is, it is at the end time down the road for the angels to do. I, I've come to think of judgment as a good thing. Judgment is a good thing. Because we all yearn for a, a separation or a clarity or a, 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 
resolution? Judgment is a good thing because we need the, the clarity, we need the justice, even within our own spirit. Um, most, not always, because Paul talks about the things that we do and that we have failed to do, but that justice, that coming clean, uh, the cleansing of the conscience. And it's another promise of God. It's another it's promise of God. It will come. It is a promise of God who loves us completely and fully. So it is a good promise of a good God. Number six. The kingdom of heaven is like the master who brings out the new and the old. What does this parable have to tell us about the kingdom of heaven? What do you suppose the new and the old mean? The living and the dead. I'm sorry? The living and the dead. The living and the dead could be. Remember the, the story, the parable of the, um, the farmer who, who hires laborers at the beginning of the day and then the middle of the day, and at the very end of the day, laborers still come into the field? Uh, could that be what it means? The laborers who have been there their whole lives? The laborers who come uh, at the very end of the shift? The new and the old. It's certainly information that there, there, are, uh, there is diversity in the kingdom of heaven. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted in the kingdom of heaven. So um, I, I compiled some words. I'm not going to have all of your words. But as we think about this kingdom of heaven, uh, here are some words to think about. It is huge. It has value. It is precious. Kingdom of heaven is home and sanctuary. It's hidden. It's pervasive, it's inclusive, it's surprising. How many of those people knew that they were going to um, come up with a treasure? Or the surprisingness of, of the mustard seed who goes from there to there? It is great. Its hallmark is joy. The kingdom of heaven is vast and universal. And like the yeast, it is also powerful. Whether we acknowledge it or not, whether we see it or not. The promise is the kingdom of heaven is unfolding all around us and within us. In St. Paul's letter today, he puts it this way. God loves us, all of us, forever and no matter what. And St. Paul goes on to say that there is nothing. There is nothing, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And that, brothers and sisters, is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Well, it's the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It's the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Shine. Oh, Jesus, give me light. I'm gonna let it shine.